In this demo, we're going to learn how to use the Service Models Web Platform Installer feed to download both Windows Azure Pack Gallery resources as well as Virtual Machine Manager service templates. Now to get started, I've already installed the Web Platform Installer 4.6 and you can see that I have three tabs up top, Spotlight, Products, and Applications. I'm going to access the Options tab and I'm going to choose to add a custom feed. And the custom feed that I need to add is this. I'll stop here for a second so you can take note of the URL. I'll click Add Feed and then OK. Now that that's done, you can see that I have an additional tab up at the top of the client, namely Service Models. Now if I access that, I'm presented with a list of gallery resources and service templates that I can go ahead and download. By default, Gallery Resources and Virtual Machine Manager Service Templates are selected, but I can easily use the left bar to just go ahead and highlight only VMM Service Templates or Gallery Resources. I'm going to go ahead and download a couple of these, and the first one I'm going to download is a VMM Service Template to deploy SharePoint Foundation SP2 into a work group. I highlight the item, click Add, and I'm going to download the same gallery resource or the same item as a Windows Azure Pack gallery resource. I simply scroll down, select the resource that I want, and choose Add. I can now go ahead and click the Install button. I'm going to be asked to accept license terms, and I could view those license terms. I'm going to go ahead and accept. And now that these are downloaded, I'm shown where they were saved on the machine uh, that I downloaded them to. By clicking Continue, we'll go ahead and open up Explorer windows automatically for each of those items. On the left is the Gallery Resource Package, and on the right is my VMM Service Template. You'll also note that each package includes a README, which has instructions particular to that package. So here's one for my gallery resource, and here's the README for my SharePoint service template. The next thing we'll do is quickly walk through the import process of each of these artifacts. Now I'm not going to go ahead and open up the README, but inside the README you'll find a note that says you have to go ahead and download the SharePoint Foundation executable, and it'll give you a link to download that executable, as that's required to, to complete the import process. I've already done that, so for my SharePoint service template, what I'm going to do is first look at my VMM library, and you can see that I've added a custom resource, and within that custom resource is the SharePoint Foundation executable. I'll go back to where my service template is saved, and copy the directory location, move up to my service templates node in the library, and start the import of the template. I choose Import Template, I browse to the path, I select the template, choose whether or not to import sensitive template settings, and click Next. I can now give a name that I want this template imported as, along with a release, and for demo purposes, I'm going to call the release Import. I have to map any resources, so I can choose a virtual hard disk that's already in my system. I can map to the SharePoint Foundation uh, custom resource that I added in the library. And I also map to a local admin run as account. And again, the README will contain details of each of these mappings. I click Next, and finally I'll click the Import button. Now that the template's been imported, I can come back to my library, and I can see that this is the template that we just imported. And I can open that template in the designer. And I could go ahead and change properties of the template to make it specific to my environment, such as the computer name or the hardware uh, aspects of this particular template. So that concludes the import process for the service template. And the next thing we're going to do is cover the import process for the Windows Azure Pack gallery item. Now the gallery item readme 
instructed me to go ahead and download the SharePoint Foundation executable and to place it in a particular folder path relative to the resource extension package. Now the resource extension package must be imported into VMM and the resource definition package must be imported into the Windows Azure Pack Virtual Machine Gallery. Here's my resource extension package and I've already gone ahead and pre-staged the SharePoint Foundation executable along with the required directory structure. I place that in a folder called Service Model Demo and just to show you the folder structure there's a directory called SRC underneath that is a directory called SharePoint Payload and finally the SharePoint executable itself. So I'm going to copy this directory to the same location as my resource extension package and once that's done we'll go ahead and import the resource extension to Virtual Machine Manager. Now the resource extension import is only available from the VMM uh, PowerShell CLI. So if I pull open my Windows PowerShell for Virtual Machine Manager, the commandlet is import cloud resource extension. I have to give it a path to the resource extension. So if we go back to that folder that we were just looking at, I can just go ahead and copy this. give it the path to my resource extension package and I also have to give it a library share path I've already done that and put a library share into a variable called a dollar ls and if my library server allows unencrypted transfer I can also use that uh, parameter option to speed up the import and once the imports done we'll go ahead and import the resource definition into the Windows Azure pack portal now I'm logged into the Windows Azure pack portal as a service administrator I'm on the VM Clouds tab and I'm going to access the gallery navigation item at the top. From here I can choose to import resource definition packages. So I'm going to browse to the location in which my packages were saved. And the readme said that I have two resource definition packages available to me. One to domain join a SharePoint Foundation 2010 SP2 uh, VM role and for a workgroup one. I'll go ahead and import the workgroup one to start. I simply browse and I click the checkbox and we'll be back after the imports complete. So I've imported both the workgroup as well as the domain uh, based resource definition package and within the gallery if I go to the second page of my gallery I can see that I do have my SharePoint Foundation 2010 SP2 domain join gallery item as well as my workgroup based gallery item and we'll switch over to a tenant view and see what the deployment process looks like. So as a tenant, I can log into the portal. And from here, I can choose to create a new virtual machine role from gallery. Once the gallery loads up, we'll scroll down and we'll see that we have our SharePoint Foundation SP2 domain item as well as our workgroup item. I'll choose the workgroup item, click next, I have to give it a name. I'm going to call it SharePoint Demo as well as a subscription into which I want to deploy. I provide some basic virtual machine properties such as the size of the VM, the initial administrator password, along with the virtual hard disk that I want to use. I give it a computer name pattern, choose a VM network to which uh, I want to attach the VM role, and in this case either choose the default workgroup name or provide my own. On the next page I have one parameter. I can hover here and get a description. It tells me that this is the directory in which the SharePoint installation files will be extracted. So I could again leave the default or choose to provide my own. And by clicking the checkbox we'd go ahead and deploy a VM role, a VM role item, install SharePoint Foundation SP2, and configure uh, the VM based on all the requirements that have been specified throughout the deployment wizard. So that's going to conclude this demo. I hope you found it informative and useful, and I thank you very much for watching.